Yeah, I think. So the last five seconds, nobody else joined. So <laughs> we, we start now. Oh, 42. OK, OK. Um, but yeah, we have four minutes after the full hour. I would say it's a good time to start. I'm Sandra Giesing. I'm an associate research professor at the University of Notre Dame in the US. And I'm really honored to, to host the source finale. And um, yeah, to, to present what was going on. I'm not presenting. We have presenters who, um, who show what was going on during the series of events. And um, we have news about the international collaborations. And going from here. So the program today is, first of all, of course, we will be all nice to each other and um, polite and listen to each other and follow the code of conduct. We talk about the International Council of RSE Association. So Stefan Druskat will present that. Then the review of the source series, because it's now over half a year, which is very impressive with every week, several events or something. Yeah. And of course, we want your feedback. And at the end, there will be a networking session, a chance to interact with each other. And we will record the meeting. So if you are, um, and it will be published online. So if you don't want to be on the recording, maybe um, turn off your video um, and you need to have your microphone muted. And we will using the Zoom chat and the Q&A function for the different program topics. So you can ask their questions that they're not re recorded in the Zoom chat and Q&A function. So several people will have a look at, at the Zoom chat and Q&A function and don't be shy, put all the questions in there. We are happy to discuss. And from here, I would say I give it to Stefan and I stop sharing my screen. Thank you. I'm gonna start sharing mine instead. Hope everybody is able to see my very first slide now. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Sandra. Um, first up, a few words about myself. My name is Stefan Druskat. I'm based in Berlin, uh, where I'm a PhD candidate at the German Aerospace Center Sustainable Software Engineering Group, um, PhD on software citation. Um, I've also been as on the on the steering and program committees of source, although I wasn't able to do as much work as I would have wanted to due, due to Corona. Um, also on board of DERSE, which is the German Society for Research Software, uh, the German version of the Society for Research Software Engineering in the UK. I'm also a DERSE Council Delegate, um, and you'll learn what that means in a, in a second. Um, yeah, so I've, I've looked it up today, and exactly one year, four days, and around about two and a half hours ago, I've written an email to activists and leaders of different RSC associations uh, to let them know that we were cancelling the second German RSC conference due to Corona. So it's um, we're going to do that in favor of starting some yet to be planned online series of events. And would they be interested in joining this effort? So it's really nice to uh, sort of come full circle today and be able to look back on Source, which has been really great, the most incredible international collaboration with people from all over the world and so many RSC communities making that happen. And in fact, what I'd like to talk about today is very much also about international collaboration. And that is the International Council of RSE Associations or in short, the council. I'm not going to charge council tax. So that's, a, that's definitely a plus. The International Council of RSE Associations is pretty much what it says on the tin. But uh, before I go into details and also tell you why I think the council can be good news for you too, um, I would like to set the scene to make clearer why we need such a thing as the council at all. So. Uh, generally speaking, the RSC community has a history of international collaboration. This pretty much started already, at least from the day the first RSC conference began in Manchester in the UK in 2016, which had RSCs from, I think, 14 different countries. And ever since then, RSCs and RSC activists have collaborated internationally, for example, by serving on each other's RSC conference committees, also by attending and speaking at these conferences, and by running the RSE survey together, for example, but also many international collaborations between individuals as well. And finally, of course, the cherry on the cake, which is this very online series of events, uh, Source. The 
history of the international RZ community is also history of formalization, though, or perhaps of more or less formalized cooperation in what we call the national or multinational RSC associations. And at the moment, we there are at least eight of these RSC associations. Um, I assume we can expect this number to grow, hopefully, over the next years. And the council um, is actually something that wants to play a part in that. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that um, the internationally collaborating activists are often also involved in their respective national associations. Uh, if you look at two histories, so you have a history of collaboration, international collaboration on the one hand, and a history of the foundation of RSC associations on the other hand, it's not very surprising to see that there has also been cross-fertilization um, across both histories, so to speak. Uh, one very good example for this is the still rather short series of international RSC leaders meetings or leaders workshops. Um, there have been two already. Um, the first international RSC leaders workshop was held in 2018 at the Turing Institute in the UK, and it was set up to grow what was then the UK RSE leaders network into an international network. And it actually ended up supporting the establishment of the Nordic RSC Association, famously, and also, I believe, planted the seeds for US RSC as well. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, the second International RSC Leaders Workshop happened last year online due to Corona, of course, and that aimed to support the establishment of research software engineering in even more countries or regions, but also to exchange knowledge between the existing RSC communities and associations we had at the time. Uh, during the workshop, what we've done is we formed different discussion groups and those worked on different topics. And if you're interested in finding out more about what actually happened at the workshop, um, you can look at the researchsoftware.org blog, which is linked through here from the slides. The slides are going to be online after the talk, uh, the talk as well, so you can actually click on the link. Um, and in the blog, the groups, uh, the single groups reported on their work during the workshop. Now, at the time the second uh, workshop happened, the state of RSE communities was already different to when the first workshop was run, especially because, like I said, instead of then three, we now had eight RSE associations. And each of them was looking into growing their own communities, but also running their own events, for example. And as you all know, the, the uh, academic conference calendar is already pretty tight. So um, that could have become a problem. So during the second International RSE Leaders Workshop, one working group discussed ways to address the need to coordinate um, and well, you know, to, to, take up, to, to take up the will, the continued will to coordinate internationally as well, of course. Um, so coordination um, is generally needed across these associations in terms of not only the local and national events, because we don't want them to overlap so as to not prevent the international audience to attend those as well. But also it makes sense to coordinate the RSC conferences targeting an international audience or, you know, so for example, in 2019, there had already been two international RSC conferences, namely DERSC 19 in Germany and the, the third or fourth international RSC conference in the UK. So coordinating one large, one large international RSC conference seems to make a lot more sense than having a patchwork of several ones. Um, beyond just planning conferences, though, we wanted to establish a means of communication that would allow the established RSC associations to formalize and continue the collaboration that has already been going on between them. Um, that in terms of knowledge exchange and coordination, but also to support newer NAS and RSC communities worldwide. So in short, what we were setting out to establish was a forum to communicate and formally meet to ensure cohesion between associations and to provide a platform for open discussion around international issues and affairs. And that's verbatim from the proposal we've come up with at the workshop. Yeah, so um, what the working group in the workshop has actually come up with is a plan for the International Council of RSE Associations. And we had started to already draft a proposal which lays out the remit of such a council. And that's namely, communication and coordination, discussion between the associations that are part of the council, conflict resolution should the need arise, especially resolving conflicts between um, member associations, and also the development of new national associations. And thankfully, we also managed to almost instantaneously at the time, secure formal support from 
all established associations. And I'll talk a bit about what we mean when we say established in a bit. And I think this is worth mentioning. We decided to not build a huge new governance structure organization or, you know, yeah, just build, build, build another organization around what we're trying to achieve. We decided to keep it lean, to keep it lightweight, um, so as to not overburden the activists that are already part of the national associations and doing great work there. Like I said, the central document for the council is the council charter, and we're currently in the process of finalizing that. And but I've just mentioned uh, the four aims we pursue, these four here, communication, coordination, discussion, conflict resolution, and the development of new associations. Um, these can in practice be summarized as uh, the things we want the council to do. So um, the council we think should coordinate participation with other interest groups such as RDA and RESA, for example, if one or more associations, national associations would be part of those. Um, it does make sense to talk about membership and to talk about what viewpoints we're taking within these other interest groups on an international level. Um, we also want to work together to build a common argumentative baseline for lobbying for research software engineering internationally and also the, the DRC role. Event co coordination is something I've mentioned already. And we also see the council to be the or a good place to govern the international RSC branding as well. Um, and that's mostly in order to establish a clear view on who, for example, should run the international RSC conference, but also to be able to have some quality control and ensure buy-in from the international RSC community in general. And also perhaps to discuss, of whether, uh, discuss whether and how to go on with source in 2021. See that as part of the international RSC branding and the, the um, efforts around um, an international conference. Uh, we also want to use the council for knowledge exchange between the RSC associations that are members of the council to discuss questions between those associations, for example, when it comes to things like becoming a formal association or getting charity status, how to get funding perhaps, and how to do, you know, generally do other things in the scope of uh, national RSC or multinational RSC associations. Um, conflict resolution between associations I've already touched upon. We're going to set up a formal way of resolving these conflicts so that we have a reliable instrument in place should there ever be the need for such a thing. And, and this is really important. We also want to support the formation of new national associations through direct interaction with these communities. So um, communities can come to the council and we can um, start the interaction and discussion of good ways to establish new associations. And last but not least, um, the, the council is a good forum where community leaders from the international RSC community can just meet and communicate. Um, so the question is, how does this actually work in practice? So the council um, means that each of the established national or multinational RSC associations will appoint or has appointed two representatives who will take place in the council meetings. And these meetings um, will generally take place around four times a year, we've said, although we'll probably have more during our first year, I guess. And in fact, we've already had two full council meetings this year, and we'll have a third one uh, next week already. The council meetings are organized by rotating chairs, and we're establishing rules for voting as well, potentially based on consensus first and majority second. Uh, membership in the council for established associations is free of charge, um, although we expect members to have some degree of organization and activity. So, for example, they should have um, a branded web presence. Um, they should have participated or will participate in the RSC survey. Uh, they should have at least 20 members, um, and it doesn't really matter how they define membership. This could be sub subscribers on a mailing list, for example. Um, but what, one point and that's also important is that um, we would like them to uniquely represent the RSC community in one or more countries so that we don't get a, a Pythonic People's Front situation. And that's the other Python. Of course, the council will also have a web presence, um, which is currently under construction. And we plan that to be just a page on researchsoftware.org. So we're re reusing what's already there in terms of resources. And last but not least, there's one point I'd really like to stress. Um, the council is not going to be, or we hope will not be perceived as some sort of exclusive club. 
Um, that's because we really wanted to support new uh, communities and therefore we think it needs to be open. Um, we have, um, well, we're, we're easy enough to contact um, through a public email list, which I'll share in a minute as well. But we also have a concept of observing participants. So the idea is that if you're starting up a new RSE community, you can just get in touch with us and be invited to the next council meeting as observing participant. And as such, you will then have the opportunity to bring up topics for discussion, also ask questions, um, generally step into interaction with the, with the council members um, at the end of the meeting. And finally, I'd like to come to the perhaps most interesting point for you today, and that is what can the council actually do for you? So I've mentioned that already through being an observing participant, you can directly learn from and interact with those that have established our associations already before you, um, particularly if you want to get, you know, get started on building an RSC association in your own country or in your own region of the world. Um, also, the council can help you fight your fear of missing out in that it co coordinates RSE events uh, to make sure that they don't overlap, which means that you could um, go to events around, say, the German Day of Research Software, but also go to the NLRC conference because they have been, they've been talking amongst themselves in the council when which thing is going to happen. Uh, the council is also the right place to plan, for example, a single large international RSC conference make sure that it benefits all communities equally, especially all the national communities. And that we don't end up with uh, numerous international conferences run by the individual associations at the same time or something, or in the same year even. And finally, and I think um, we can't stress this too much, the better the associations, the established RC associations work together internationally, the more impact we think we can have for research software engineering on an international level. For example, when it comes to pushing the case of RSE roles in different scenarios, etc. And so with this, um, all that's left to say is thank you for listening. Thanks to everyone who has contributed to the installation of the council in any way. And that's been uh, first and foremost, the people on the right-hand side of the slide, um, but also the, the council members who will be listed on the council website at some point. Um, yeah, you can get in touch um, through this public mailing list. Um, forthcoming is the council page on the researchsoftware.org website. And if you want to learn more uh, about how the council is being set up, uh, you can read the blog post that is linked through here. I'm also going to paste the link in the chat in just a wee sec. Um, finally, thanks to the source team for giving me the chance to speak here today. And also, of course, to everyone involved in source for making this. Uh, beautiful series of events. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to take questions and so are my co-authors on the blog post and also contributors to the original council idea. Um, Paul Richmond and Anna Fuyu and Ian Costin is here as well. Thanks very much. I'm going to stop sharing now. Yeah, thank you so much, Stefan. So uh, we have questions. So one was a slightly off topic question, as Matthew said that, where did the P-shaped bubble thing for the RSE Society logos come from? And we, so Paul did already do some research in the background in the Slack channel. It's, and it's, it's much like research software. It's something that we inherited, but we don't fully understand why um, it is the way that it is. <laughs> Um, I think the consensus around some of the uh, the older trustees uh, that were around at the time was that it was uh, a, a community voice. But I think Simon Hetrick's the only person who can confirm that, and he hasn't yet. Yeah, and it, yeah, and one of my answers was also I get is like, yeah, it's a speech bubble of many people, so that is a P shape, and um, the and we got one answer in the Q and A that. Max Darling answered for the German one is the explanation even in the GitHub. So you can look at the GitHub. So I think when we when we find out uh, who, who did design it, we'll also find out who's responsible for the origin of RSE purple as well, which I'd really like to know. <laughs> <laughs> the purple is a very bright color. I think the branding is great. It is always obvious. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so the next question 
open question we have. Why is source coming to an end? Would love to see this continue. It was really great. So I think I give this question or I, I can start with an answer. So we also loved it. And I'm really glad that we have the review today and everything. But you can imagine that it was also a lot of work to do weekly events. And um, so I let everyone else chime in. We are happy to continue. Also, we did see that there are more, you know, that there were still submissions and everything. But it, it was also necessary that there must be a rollover, let, let's say, in the program committee and the organization committee, because it's a lot of work. It's um, and do it every week for over half a year has um, taken some effort. So I think it was not, we loved the idea. We loved also the diversity of uh, contributions and everything, but probably it's more like we, we need volunteers who take maybe it's the next phase if we would continue. So now I let someone else, maybe Terry, you want to chime in, Jeremy? I can follow on that, Sandra. Like, absolutely, as you're saying, the, there was there was a level of volunteer fatigue um, that was starting to come into play. Um, but I think also we we're all hoping that come September, uh, conferences will be restarting. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, and you know we don't want to to steal all of your lovely material uh, for source that could be going towards national conferences. So another question. Oh, if someone else want to chime in, just interrupt me. <laughs> if we haven't mentioned something. Um, so one of the next questions was on coordination. Should local organizations work with local other interest groups and the council with just international interest groups? So that is directly for you, Stefan. Yes, yeah, so I've tried to um, question, uh, answer that in, in writing already. Um, I misread the question first, uh, thinking that you're talking about um, who can be a member of the council, James, but um, I think my second answer is hopefully better. So in terms of interacting with RDA, for example, I think it would make sense for the council to um, interact with the global RDA organization, whereas I think UK RSE should interact with the UK RDA and Germany, the DRC should interact with uh, DERA, for example. But you know, I, I think I think it's still early days. So this is something that sounded good at the time we were writing it down, and we still have to fill it with some life. So um, if you have opinions on that, we I think we're we're happy to hear them. And um, this is yeah, this is not something that's totally fleshed out. Um, and we don't want to say don't talk to anyone because that's that's us. But you know, <laughs> let's let's have a conversation about this. If you if you have if you think there are there are reasons why we shouldn't say talk to, for example, uh, as as the council talk to um, a specific national REA um, section, then um, there may be a good reason for them. Let, let us know. Yeah, there was another answer from James Grant. So uh, he said that he was thinking more for external interactions with non RSE orgs like Visa or RDA. So source might coordinate interactions with the British Computing Society. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, SDRZ, for example, we interact a lot with uh, the German Society for Informatics, GI. Um, I think that's that's the right level of coordination between non rsc organizations um the same would go for rda i suppose so um if rda was looking for a partner in research software engineering then they could come to the council and if de rda so the german section would uh, look for a partner they would they could probably come to drc if that makes sense sounds good so the next question i, I pick them still up even so they are shortly answered and in the Q&A, but I think it's good to, to discuss them. So what does it mean the mailing list is public? Does this mean that everyone can subscribe or does it mean that everyone can send or both? So that answer, yeah. Ian Costin already gave it, it just that anyone, just. yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I answered it. Um, yeah, it's really a point of contact for the council. So if, if you have a, something you wanna bring an issue or a topic that you wanna directly hit all uh, representatives on the council, that's the way to send to it rather than subscribing. I guess there was, there was another question too about um, 
you know, archives, archives and, yes. and, right. And again, it, th think of it as a point of contact rather than a, a, a subscribing mailing list. It was probably badly worded on the, on the slide. Uh, it's not something that will go in the ether and be made public in, a, in an archive or something. So let me go to the question. I think we have answered all the current questions. Could I just add a, one, one more thing in terms of the way people may want to interact? So I, Stefan did a great job of kind of saying why it's, um, so my dog is barking at the worst moment. Um, the joys of working at home. The staff did a great job of highlighting why, why the, uh, the International Council is a good thing for you, but I think one of the other things that was missed, um, and, and I, this is my fault because I've seen the slides and forgot to suggest putting it on, um, was that if, if you want to brand your event as an international event, or if you want to, and this is not just conferences, but you know, if, if you want to launch an initiative around policy or uh, or, or anything uh, like that, then the, the International Council is a good place to kind of get that support from, from more than just your local RSE association or society. So the, the way to do that would be speak to your local association or society and, and ask them to bring that to one of the council meetings and we can put that to a vote to the council and, and hopefully if it's a good idea, support it and, and brand it as an international thing and, and push it out in more places than, than just your, uh, your, your local country or group region. Great, thanks Paul. Any other comments about the international? So Frank, also multinational funders would be more interested to have a multinational RSE organization to talk to. Yeah, so that is the additional topic of course. So, so, and more multinational funders would be great also between the continents. That would make some things easier. So, great. And what, while that is true, we, we, we have taken the approach of this kind of decentralized approach for the, for, the, um, for the council, because we want to avoid creating a new legal entity that is international. So we don't want the International Council to have a bank account and governance and, 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 and everything that's already in place uh, for running the, 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 the other conferences and so on. So it's, it's more of just a, a way for us to coordinate and collaborate together and be something that's going to generate money and, and have a bank account and so on. So. Great. Okay. Okay, if there are no further comments, we are coming to the next program topic. And that is on the overview on the RSE, so on, on source of the last couple of months. So Terry, take it away from here. Yeah, I will do. Thank you very much, Sandra. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, so hi, I'm going to do a quick sort of overview of, of source. Um, so let me just reset my timer so I know how long I'm talking for. Um, so how did it all start? Well, um, back at the beginning of 2020, just as all the national conferences were, were starting to get rolling, uh, we were starting to meet up and start planning. Some, uh, some of the national conferences had even started uh, sort of organizing how sessions would work. Well, uh, the world changed. Um, and uh, COVID obviously started, uh, the streets emptied, and all of those national conferences had to get cancelled. Um, and so everything was looking rather bleak at the time. I don't think we quite knew how just how long that feeling would last for. Um, but one thing that we all, uh, so what happened then was essentially there was a call went out um, to all RSEs assemble. Uh, we still wanted to get together, we wanted to connect, we wanted to do something as a community. And in fact, it, you know, in this time of COVID, that was probably more important now than ever. Um, so we formed a sort of an international committee to run Source. Uh, we started in April 2020. That was the first time the program uh, committee got together. There was also the operating com committee, and it took us a while to figure things out and what we wanted to do. Um, so we knew it'd have to be online. We wouldn't be able to get up in person. But how were we going to run it? Was it going to be? Uh, a single event, a series of events, and it took us a little while, but eventually, yes, yeah, Source was born, and that's we came up with this series of online research software events. And I kind of wanted to go through a few facts and figures, and a few sort of details and flashbacks to to uh, 
to uh, a course source, but I wanted to do that more interactively. So I'm hoping everybody can whip out their, their devices, their phones, bring up a browser window, go to www.menti.com and then type in the code 52647338. And we're going to do a quiz together, hopefully. So I'll give you a minute or so to do that. Hopefully this is working. Oh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some people joining. This is brilliant. So come on in, we're gonna do a quiz. Um, you, there, there will be points, there will be a winner. This is a competition. There will not be a prize, um, apart from a big round of applause from everybody attending, of course. So uh, we've got a series of, of rounds. So it's going to ask you um, to enter in a nickname. Uh, please remember our code of conduct. Um, this nickname will be public to everybody. Everybody will see the nicknames. So, so do enter something appropriate. Um, and we shall begin. Okay, I'm seeing a few people just kind of coming in. So I think we shall make a start. So, way we've got loads of people. Everybody's got lovely icons. This is good. So question one. Oh, and the faster you get an answer, the more points you get. On what date did Source launch? So was it 3rd of August, the 2nd of September, or the 1st of October? So thinking back to last year, what date did Source launch? Let's see what everybody to get. Ooh, well done. 20, 20, 21 people got the 2nd of September. Yep, that was when we started, which was a massive seven months ago. Um, so, you know, we're doing really well uh, to have kept Source going for so long. Okay, question number two. I should have got some music. Who hosted the Source launch event? Was it Sandra Guessing, Claire Wyatt, Stephanie Yanash, or Jeremy Cohen? Testing your memories here. Thinking back to that launch event. Three, two, one. Oh, it wasn't Claire. Oh no, it was Sandra. Sandra did our launch event and she did our finale event. It has come full circle. It is a thing of beauty. Um, I, I'm so sorry, Sandra, that not more people remembered your, your excellent hosting there. No um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, next question in this round is, which of these people did not speak at the launch event. So which of these people did not speak at the launch event? Claire Wyatt, Carrie Jordan, Marianne Hardy, or Matt Parker? Sandra did mention one of these names earlier. Yay, most people got this right, fantastic. Yes, Matt Parker, of course he spoke at our Christmas event. Um, whereas uh, Claire, talked all about source um, at the launch uh, and what we were planning on doing. And then we had two excellent keynotes from Carrie and Marianne. Okay, so fingers crossed, we can now have a look at the leaderboard. How are people doing? Oh, Marion, Marion is in the lead. This is very good. Okay, people are doing well. Right, oh, this is working out quite exciting. Okay, round two, facts and figures. So this might be a little bit more, a uh, little bit more guesswork perhaps, maybe a little bit of figuring out. So question four is, how many events have we run? And when I say an event, I mean uh, an individual talk, demo, workshop, etc. So how many events, 35, 38, 44 or 48? One, everybody put in your answer and okay, guys are good. Yeah, it's 44 events. So we have run 44 events over seven months. That's approximately 1.5 events a week. Um, so uh, we've done over our target of running a one event a week, which is, which is really exciting and very good. Um, and this, by the way, isn't including partner events as well. So, so these are source events. So question number five. Da -da 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 -da. How many hours have we filled with events? So if you take all those events, how long do they take up? 
Was it 26 hours, 30 hours, 38 hours, or 42 hours? How many hours have we filled with source events since we started? Oh, it wasn't quite 42, I'm afraid. It was 38 hours. I, I went through the website and I added them all up. Um, so yeah, 38 hours, which if we were to put that into a normal conference format would have been approximately four days of conferencing. So that's that's really cool. Um, and of course, that does not just include all of the extra discussion event, uh, sort of networking after the after the event. OK, uh, question number six, we're halfway through, we're doing well. Approximately how many people have attended since we started? So this is an approximate. So we've got 300, 350 or 400. So how many people do we think have attended? It is obviously unique people um, across source since we started. We think it's actually 400 people. Um, so based on the number of registrations we've had for some of the big events and then all the other ones and take into account that lots of people will have attended more events, uh, so same, same events, we think probably 400 people, which think is more than any national conference. So that's really, really exciting. Um, okay, uh, I think we have another look at the leaderboard. How are people doing? Oh, Marion, your lead is gone. Um, so Frosty is now the fastest and James is a close second. Oh, the tension, the tension. Right, round number three, thinking back to Christmas. Okay, so. <laughs> Thinking about Christmas, what happened? Attendees came from how many countries? At the beginning of the event, we showed a map and we let people mark on what country they were in while watching it. So was it three, five, nine or 12 different countries people attended, attendees to the Christmas event said they were in? Ooh, 15, yes. Yes, 15 people, well done. Uh, yeah, the answer was nine, nine different countries. We had, and I wrote these all down, uh, we had the US, we had Guatemala, which was very exciting, Italy, France, Luxembourg, Germany, UK, Ireland, and the Netherlands. Um, so a great representation um, to one event, our Christmas event. Okay, uh, next question, question eight of 12. What did Matt Parker's spreadsheet let us do? So if you think back to that Christmas event, he gave, shared a spreadsheet with us. Now, did it let us control his Christmas tree lights, control lights on a board or nothing? It didn't work. What did Matt Parker's spreadsheet let us do? Yay, pretty much everyone got this right. Yeah, it was indeed. It let us control his Christmas tree lights. Uh, now, the, the next question is a sort of follow on from that one. Um, so when he shared that uh, spreadsheet, what did people try to do with it? Uh, was there SQL injection? Did people try to insert deliberately broken formulas? Were people trying to have a conversation or was it all of the above? And time's up. Yep, 14 people, well done, all of the above. Yes, I don't think Matt Parker is gonna be sharing Google spreadsheets live with an audience again. <laughs> we were not to be trusted at that time. <laughs> okay, so this brings us back to the leaderboard. How are we doing? Oh, I think we might have had another change of leadership. Oh, Matt B is up ahead. James is still a close second. Ooh, okay, this is it last round community champions so i wanted to highlight some people who've done a lot of things within the community particularly but obviously around source so here we are question 10 who's hosted the most sessions is it jeremy cohen claire wyatt me sandra guessing or marion vinesill so who's hosted the most sessions across source? Uh, 
actually it's a draw between myself and Jeremy. We've both hosted five sessions each. Um, we're clearly uh, suckers for the volunteering. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, well done to me and Jeremy. But, um, but yeah, so we're five sessions each. I'm afraid, Sandra, you're still slagging behind. You're only your second, you've got four. You've hosted four sessions, very close. Um, okay. Next question. This is the penultimate question. Who's presented the most? So I went through the website, looked at whose names are attached to more than one contribution. So Carlos Martinez, Michelle Barker, Florian Thierry or Dan Katz. Whose name is attached to the most events? Who has presented or contributed to a presentation the most? This was a bit of a trick question. Everybody's a winner. All of these people uh, have all contributed to three events each. Thank you so much for your contributions. They're, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, and, and you're all absolute superstars. Okay, this is it. This is the last question. So uh, see how we get on. Which session had the most registrations? Now, a session can include more than one talk. So I've sort of put the short names here. So A is uh, my team left um, and I'm having to rewrite all my code from scratch as well as the talk about applying Scrum in a research software project. B is the talk on um, uh, applying FAIR into containers. Let me whip up my notes to make sure I got the title right. Uh, yes, FAIR containers um, and, and help I'm a research software manager. C is the demo on executable research articles, and D is a talk on pop methodology and being a self-employed RBC. I said it just in time. And the winners was the Fair Containers and RBC Managers talk. So that session had 80 uh, unique registrations, which is really cool. Uh, the other ones were very, very close, but they only managed to get into the 60s. Um, so the unique registrations. So. That is the last question. It is time for the final leaderboard. Oh, and I think we've had some surprise turnout. Oh no, no, James, James, after being second for so long, you are our winner. Congratulations, you win absolutely nothing except all of our um, appreciation and praise. Well done, um, yeah. And so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was a slightly more interactive way of, of, of showing you all the things that we've been doing at Source um, since we started. Um, and I'll, I'll just go back to the slides to say, if you um, missed any of the talks that have happened, if, if any of those questions in the quiz sort of got you excited for talks you might have missed, do check out our YouTube channel. Our website will be up, uh, will still be up with all the abstracts and it will have the links to the slides. Um, and, the, and the talks, or yeah, just go up onto YouTube and, and find them all. They will stay up there. Um, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you for attending Source. Um, and thank you to everybody who's been involved. And uh, that is that is me. Thank you so much, Terry. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Good. Like that. Good. And uh, got all the numbers. So I will still... The Steal this idea for, for something interaction with, with an event. So any questions for Terry? I've seen in QA is you get a lot of applause, yes. <laughs> so yeah, so all the material will stay on the website. Um, there are the videos, as she said. Um, yeah, contact us if if you think there's something missing. I don't think that there is something missing, but you know, you never know. So, yeah. If there are no further comments, yeah, you get you know a lot of applause. <laughs> Very good. Cool. All the kudos goes to James for winning the quiz tonight. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, some someone tries to catch the name James, maybe. <laughs> no. no, here my name was a typo. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Florian. It's <laughs> good. So we are going to, to the next program topic. And that is have your say, community feedback. 
and I give it to Chris. Hello, right. Share the screen. It's a good idea. There we go. Right. So, yes, we spent seven months or so doing all this stuff with Source. Uh, so it occurred to us it would be a good idea to try and uh, get some input from from you guys, from the community that we've been trying to serve the best we can uh, on on how we did. We've been trying to we've been collecting a little bit as we went along, but we thought it'd be useful to get some some big big end of feedback from you here. And as everybody knows, if you want to get feedback from people, you have to trap them at an event and make them give you feedback before they can leave. So welcome to the trap. And um, you've already been nicely warmed up with Mentimeter by Terry. So exactly the same drill, go to menti.com, then the code at the top. Uh, whilst you do that, just a few words about um, the the data for that we're going to collect now and what we're going to do with that, just to, just to keep you guys uh, aware of what happens to your responses. Um, so the idea is that hopefully this info should let us sort of plan, you know, assess the outcomes of source, how well we did, what we could have done better, uh, and plan future events, future instances of source, maybe, uh, or maybe um, informing RSE conferences in our in our crazy new world. Um, everything you enter is anonymous, of course, um, unless you enter anything saying what your name is in any of the free text sections, don't do that. Um, but if you do, we will uh, we'll purge it before the data is shared any more widely. Speaking of which, um, we will probably be sharing the data with relevant national RSE organizations to help them with planning their kind of national events. Uh, and we'll also probably do some sort of publishing of the data in a summary form. Um, just to uh, sort of pick out the main points. Um, right, there's a few too many of these probably, so we are gonna whiz along as much as we possibly can, and um, uh, and I'll just sort of try and sprinkle in a little extra context and detail uh, when we get to to some of the sections. But let's uh, let's try and get kicked off. Uh, Great, but a simple background to start. Okay, we've reached equilibrium, so we'll move on. Next question, how many events did you attend? This is interesting. I was wondering how many hardcore 10 plus people we would see. Okay, there's nobody but one to two. That's good. Nobody went to one and was then so hugely put off they couldn't come to, a, to anything else. Uh, great. That's equilibrium again, I think. Uh, so this is an interesting one. This is where you get to rank things. So put things in order of what sort of format you, you, you preferred for the events you attended. Chris, there's a question because of software demo. Oh no, yeah, how did I miss that? <laughs> Where's the <laughs> software demo option? <laughs> Good, well, this question is uh, probably junk then, didn't mind. I knew we had too many formats. Great, that's something like equilibrium, I think. Um, so this is, um, what do you call it? Word thing where you sort of provide keywords and then it does a fancy word thing with them. What are those called again? Word cloud, thank you. Thank you for providing the, uh, the answer via that channel.
I really like that the community gets so big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. They put a lot of effort, these Mentimeter guys, into making these fancy uh, transition animations as well. <laughs> Awesome, look at that huge community. And I'm personally very pleased to see container and containers being quite well represented as well. Excellent, good stuff. Um, moving on then. So same again, but this time, what did we miss? What would you like to see? I've never seen a word cloud with an emoji in it before, but. Okay, great, all good stuff. A more diverse set of answers, I think, as you might expect, but interesting to see. Uh, okay, just give that a few more seconds for people before we move on. Okay. Right, crack some easy ones. How do we do on timing? Okay, great, won't argue with that one. Uh, similar again, how do we how do we do on our aim to be international and try and you know make things work for as many countries as possible? Not too bad, it seems. I'm starting to like you guys. How about our communication? Did we did we spam you? Did you have no idea what was happening? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Looks like there's maybe some pockets of people we missed, but quite a bit in the center as well. Intriguing. Of the uh, the main communication channels we use, which ones were, were were sort of useful? Which ones would you have not bothered with? So this, again, this is ranking ranking them in order how useful they were. Mm, I'm getting 26 responses, but it's not showing them up. So I'm not sure why that is, but I think we are going to have to zip along. Hmm. Uh, recording. So we tried to make sure recordings were provided if possible. People could engage with stuff asynchronously or where, you know, it wasn't convenient for their schedule. Okay, good to know. Moving on again. Um, so this is an interesting one in that we found this a big challenge. I mean, one thing we were really hoping to do with Source was kind of provide um, an alternative for 
um, the, the kind of networking aspects of, of, of conferences. Uh, and it's something we found really challenging and we found difficult to get people to engage with um, those networking things that we did try to do. So just a really open question to you guys, like what, what would you have liked to have seen in this space? What would have made you, you know, excited to engage in some virtual networking? Yes, this is really interesting. Like, you know, we've always wanted to strike a balance between not being too sort of prescriptive or all people have to talk about and giving them opportunity to sort of have freewheeling conversations that come up at conferences, but also, you know, being thrown in a breakout room with strangers can be intimidating. And uh, we've, we could find no practical way of emailing free alcohol to, to uh, an international community of software engineers. So what can you do? Okay, thanks for that. I think we need to move on as we are, well, more or less out of time already. Um, so diversity, I think this is a super important one for us. Uh, and we're, we're, we're very keen to hear how we, uh, you guys think we did on this front. That's a big relief. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> good stuff. Good to hear. Thanks for that. And um, moving on. Yeah, just um, some free space to uh, yeah tell us anything you think we could have done better uh, around diversity. Anything about how we organize events, how we how we got contributions, how we did anything. Okay, I think there's some really clear messages in there for us and something to take on board. So yeah, thank you. I'll just give a few more seconds on that question because I think we're really interested in that one. Okay, uh, I'm afraid in the interest of time, I think we'll have to, to move along. Um, so a bit further on the uh, research topic, this is maybe less of a feedback point and more of a more of a plug. Um, so um, if you the US RSE uh, community are interested in uh, well, working on developing um, in this area. So yeah, uh, and they're interested in feedback on uh, people being interested in participation. Yeah, I really love that result. So <laughs> we are welcoming at the US RC, of course, also international participation. And we will discuss to, oh, DEI, sorry, that is the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group. So we, we are working on, for example, we, we have um, uh, yeah, created a speaker series. So we have a speaker tomorrow. Uh, 
it's an inaugural event that starts off tomorrow. And um, it's Sherry Pancake, so anyone who's interested can reach out to me, can, and you can register. You find it also on the website. Let me maybe copy the website URL here. And registration is for free, of course. This is the general USRSE website. And the event. is here. Great, thanks for that. And um, I've skipped ahead on the next question because I think it uh, touches on similar bases and uh, we don't have much time left. So I just want to whip through the last stuff. Um, so yeah, if in-person conferences do go ahead, do you think there is a place for source um, as a kind of complementary thing that sort of carries on throughout the year anyway, um, that, um, that, that, you know, complements in-person events? Um, and um, what do you think about in-person events um, and our new world of remote access and, you know, not wanting to uh, destroy the climate by flying a lot, etc. Is there mileage in remote attendee stuffs? Um, 23 here, which I think means I have responses, but for some reason they're not animating on the thing. I assume I'll be able to see that data later. Thank you for that. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so a nice simple one, you know, would you like to see, what format would you like to see for conferences from now on? Person, virtual. Yeah, nobody wants pure virtual. <laughs> Very understandable. Moving on, uh, apologies, we're very nearly there. Um, yeah, just kind of an open-ended question. Like um, if we, if in-person conferences turn out to be not, not going to happen, then, you know, what, what kind of events and activities would you like to see uh, instead? More source, something else? More sauce, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you for that. It is, it is nice to hear. Um, excellent. Two more seconds then, and then I think we'll move along. Right, that's the last one. Uh, yeah, just um, a bit of space for you guys to to give any thoughts you may have in general about source at all. Um, I will hand back to Sandra now, actually, and uh, and just leave this up, leave this open for you guys to uh, to to stick in anything else that occurs. Thank you so much, Chris, uh, and thank you all for your feedback. So. Any further comments, of course, are more than welcome. Um, we will have a networking session. And when I, you know, see here, so with a networking session, maybe today, if you still have time, um, we, we can continue this discussion. Started by Chris with, with, with the questionnaire and the Mentimeter. And let me share my screen one again. So, we just did the community feedback for a short overview. We should see, see the slides. So yeah, for source, many, many came together to make source a success. 
And I really would like to mention besides the organizing committees where I get to in a moment. Um, so, of course, all the speakers, the community, the, you know, people who got stayed up late in the evening to listen to the talks, so people who prepared the abstracts, um, yeah, people who volunteered to, to share the information. And I can only tell one story also. One of, when, when I hosted one of the sessions, I unfortunately forgot to start the recording again. And I asked my two speakers whether they could record their talks extra that we can have some on the website. And they did it the same day. They sent me recordings. So they gave the same talk twice a day. <laughs> so that was very impressive, very supportive. Um, and I could only apologize several times for that, that I made the double of the work for them. But yeah, I must say every, Every event I attended, it was a very welcoming atmosphere. People were polite with people. I think this community is really a very open, accepting diversity community. And my thanks to, to all of you being like that. I really appreciate it. And um, so in the next slide, one overview about the volunteers. We had that at the beginning that, you know, all the volunteers who contributed to organizing events, to setting up technology, to review, to make suggestions. And especially, I would like to mention Claire Bott. She She was the heart, or is the heart. So it's is not ended yet. <laughs> we are continuing. She's the heart and the head of, of this effort. And um, yeah, she, she, I hope she will see this when she sees the recording that, that she got a lot of positive feedback. And I bring up, so thank you to you all again. And 